know this, I gotta show kids the flow, flow, roll shit, make sure y'all know this shit, uh, go together like afros and picks, new song, sing along with it. Playing Casio, Casio keyboard, I can't think of the particular, um, like the actual number or the name, but it was like a cheap ass Casio keyboard and uh, karaoke machine to add the tapes. Before I started making my own beats, I used to like loop up and the other cats, you know, dub and make my own little instrumental joints from little uh, like parts of open parts of other cats' beats. And then it went from that to like a W30 chord sampler. And then that's after that, then that's when it went to the NPC. So like 2000, 2001. So yeah, yeah. Good thing I didn't, I didn't know Slumpy, you know, when I was. You know, I was trying to let them hear beats when I had the Casio and the, the W30, you know what I'm saying? I, I came with them at the right time. I had a real piece of equipment, so yeah. Yeah, I remember the first night I got the MP, I, I figured out how to use it, so uh, I was working on it, but yeah, I can't remember the exact joint I sampled, though, but it was, it was a while ago. I remember them early joints I was sampling. <laughs> I think a lot of cats did, uh, did this and probably still do it to the day. I uh, was sampling like just a lot of open dealer drums <laughs> or dealer BCDs. So uh, that's like one of the things I remember from the beginning. Like anything that had open drums and I had a lot of dealer beat tapes or whatever. So I, to, I, didn't, I didn't have no drums, so I had to get them somewhere. So and then you know eventually, of course, I learned how to make my own drums. So yeah. I remember I didn't even have a car at a certain time because um, I, was, I was catching the bus with my MPC up to the studio to work with Slum when I had my XL. So uh, and before then, you know, I didn't have a ride. So I was working at like some uh, like little clothing store, man. That when I was doing like stock, I was a stock boy or something in the back, just hanging up and taking the clothes out the box and putting them on the rack. And I was a bus boy at one point, so you know. I had a, you know, just regular jobs like that, man, you know what I'm saying, just trying to stack bread to piece together, you know, your little studio workstation, and uh, took me from there to meeting Slum and making beats for, a, you know, a group that was on an actual label, getting a little money and getting a little taste in the industry, and, you know, the rest is history. First joint I heard on the radio was uh, a song I got called So Gone. It was on Sound of the City, and we had this thing in Detroit where I think it actually still going on today where they call it uh, What's Next on the Menu. Every Saturday, they take like an hour on. Uh, uh, the, you know, like the main radio station for the city and um, play like all indie music from, or all, all music from local music from rappers and whatever. So, yeah, they played my joint a few times and I was like, this was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Just to hear your voice and to hear your beat come through. But yeah, it was dope, it was dope. I think, I think it was me. I was rhyming over my own joints. So I was rapping before I got into the beat. So yeah, I was recording my own songs. And then, you know, outside of that, I had my own group. One of my homeboys and one of my cousins, we, was, uh, we went by the name of 10 Speed and Brown Shoot. That was like the first stuff I was producing for before I met Slump. So, and then after that, you know, that's when I that's when I met Slum and, and the first beats they bought from me was beats that we had used already and did songs to. So, you know, I just I didn't want to give them up at that time, but I was like, whatever. Did you rhyme under your same name when you were in that? Did you do yeah, I was black milk. Yep. Yeah, I was black milk from the jump. Yeah, so that's and that's kinda weird. Most people have other names before they <laughs> but yeah, I was black milk from the jump. So yeah. Any city, you know what I'm saying? I think it's like a lot of this cast that might be under the radar that has talent. So yeah, Detroit has Definitely like artists that that deserve, you know, or I wish they had a little more shine, you know what I'm saying, of what they do and their talent could be more exposed. But uh you got cast like Fat Cat. <laughs> That's funny cast like Fat Cat. Producers like Kareem Wiggins, you know what I'm saying? He might not get a lot of shine, but he's super talented dude. And newer cats, uh, you got an up and coming cat, up and coming artist like Danny Brown, you know what I'm saying, doing his thing. Uh, he been been getting a little bit of love, a lot a little shine, you know what I'm saying, and, and doing his thing. Like our local 
one of our local weeklies. Okay. There, there was an article about you, and they did like a diagram of like the people that you link with in the city. Oh, it's dope, bro. It's dope. Black milk is the heart of Detroit. So, okay. No, I look, it look, it look pretty accurate. Um, Cal Troy, yeah. Buster Rhymes, Cardinal Fisher, uh, Bishop Lamont, Work with KRS One, Buckshot. Yeah, these are the projects out of the city, album of the year, trying to. The artist is pretty accurate, other producers on the album. That ain't accurate, that's not accurate. <laughs> I don't know even what this is talking about. Other producers on the album included Kanye West. What are they talking about? I know. I mean, he was on that actual album on uh, Selfish, but yeah, he wasn't on that particular song. But yeah, yeah, this this look pretty accurate. I mean, that's dope that you know somebody would feel that way. Like you know what I'm doing kind of makes me like the heart of the city. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that's that's dope. That my shit bangs more, it's hot, uh, spit with the octane flow, 